Have you accumulated so many books that you don't know what to do with them, you don't know where to store them, and you're wondering, are these books messing with my feng shui? In this video today, I'm gonna to share with you the energy behind books, where a good place to store books are, and how books affect your feng shui. I'm Jeanette Sizikowski, your go-to feng shui consultant. Let's get into it. Where should you avoid having books? Is there anywhere that's bad for books to be with your feng shui? Really, I just advise against having books in the bedroom. You can have one or two books that you're reading before you go to bed to help you wind down, but you don't want stacks of books at the end of your bed or in any tall bookcases that are like looming over your bed or any piles of books and all these books that you haven't gotten to that you want to get to. Don't leave all of those next to your bed and definitely no books under your bed. Keep the books in offices or nooks, other quieter yin areas, calmer areas where you would study or read, but not so yin that it's your bedroom where you're trying to restore your energy at night, get some rest, regain your energy for the next day. You don't want more books adding to that space. Books have so much energy with them and in them. If you think about it, somebody put their heart and soul into writing this book, all of their time into writing this book, especially if they're a memoir or a biography, like it encapsulates so much of a person and really like that person's energy. And so all of that is in one book in your space. Maybe the book was given to you by somebody who's passed away now or an old friend. There's energy with that person that gave it to you. Maybe it's a book you've had since childhood. There's a lot of memories. There's a lot of good, bad, complicated memories maybe with that book. So there's a bunch of energy there. Or maybe it's a personal development book or a how-to book that you've had sitting next to your bed and you keep looking at it like, oh yeah, I have to read that. And it's just a constant reminder of something that you have to do, or maybe it's showing you who you want to be and it's reminding yourself of like, I'm not where I wanna be yet, I'm not totally happy with my life right now, you know? So there's a lot of different ways, depending on the book, that that energy can go. There's a lot of different types of energy that that book can give off. Books are very deep and we never really think about all the energy that goes into them and then the energy behind the gift of it. And so keeping them out of your bedroom is a something I really stress to people. Take the books out of your bedroom so that when you go to sleep, you are just restoring your own energy and there's not a lot going on around you. Again, it's no big deal if you have one or two that you are reading before you go to bed to wind down next to your bed. So the second thing I wanna bring up about books is you might be asking, where should I store my books? What direction is best for feng shui to have books in? Now, BTB feng shui, there's different types of schools of it. BTB might tell you to keep it in the Northeast for self-cultivation, for spirituality, for knowledge and wisdom support. You can have your books there. It might tell you in the North, that is for your career, that's all things personal development and career related, so books might go there, or they might tell you, BTB school might tell you to put them in the West, which is creativity and children, so especially children's books or any creative, fantastical, fantasy books is fantastical a word, so any books over there for creativity in the West. So those are the recommendations based on BTB feng shui, where they look at your home more of a basic one size fits all and each direction has a category. I practice classical feng shui where it's a little more specific. We look at when your home was built, the direction it's facing, and some time calculations to see where the energy comes in specifically to your home. And I look at how you interact with your home specifically and the energies that are present in your home specifically. There isn't one size fits all solutions necessarily in classical feng shui because energy is always changing and your home is situated situated a certain way and built at a certain time and so it's a little bit different. So what I would look at for 2021 using classical feng shui is where is the wisdom energy coming in, where is the inspirational, inspiring knowledge, wisdom energy coming in this year? How can you interact with an energy that's best to study in or read in or learn in? And for this year, 2021, the best like wisdom, knowledge, studying energy is coming in the south. 
in that area if you've been having a hard time learning or feeling stuck or feeling uninspired in the south for 2021 that is a good direction to try and read in study in journal in and soak in some inspiration the third thing i want to say and the last thing i want to say about books is how do you arrange them right so feng shui isn't about interior design or the decor but it is important to keep all of these books that hold so much energy tidy so on your shelves pull all of your books to the front you don't want them sitting back or catty corner or falling over pull them to the front and so they are flush with the shelf face some people like to arrange them and color coat them in the rainbow pattern or color coat them blues with blues, greens with greens, yellow with yellow. You can also intentionally turn some books on their side and stack little tchotchkes or picture frames. If you stack like a few, three, and then you put a picture on top, you leave some vertical. This fills up if you have a lot of built-in bookshelves or if you have a lot of, yeah, built-in bookshelves or storage and you don't want to go out and buy a ton of books to actually fill it, but you don't like how empty the shelves look, you can play with balancing out some that are vertical, some that are horizontal, laying on their side, and then dispersing evenly picture frames, or I think they're called curios, actually, not ch or tchotchkes, but just little sculpture, little art pieces, crystals, mini plants, Putting those around the books to fill up the book space is always nice. But to cut back on that cutting energy that your shelves may be giving off, especially if they're floating shelves or they're getting a cutting energy, pull the books to the front and it softens those edges. All right, there's three tips about how to store your books, where to store your books, how books interact with feng shui and that energy. I hope you enjoyed this. Comment below which one you're excited to try. If you like this video, please like this video. And if you're new to this channel, then hit that notification bell and subscribe. Stay tuned for all of the feng shui and mindset tip videos I share with you every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, because these videos will help you transform a life that you tolerate into one you treasure.